So I went and saw the, uh, the Exodus movie. Anybody see this thing? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. How was it? <laughs> Let me elaborate. It's a bit of a rant. It has nothing to do with anything. But indulge me for a moment. So I go see this movie, the Exodus movie. Ridley Scott, the director, and all the hoity-toities. And who's Moses? What's his name? Baal, right? Christian Baal, yeah. So anyway, I come out of this movie, and I'm just totally frustrated. As all get out. I mean, whenever Hollywood does a movie about anything based on a story or a book, they go out of their way to be as accurate as they possibly can so that they will have the fan base support for the movie, right? When they did Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, they went through extraordinary efforts to bring that thing to life, to be as accurate and true to the original story as humanly possible. When they did Batman, they wanted to make sure that all of Batology would be happy with their version of Batville. Okay, and the motivations and everything they had to, you know, let people know who the next Batman was and see how the fan base would accept the Bat guy and who's going to be the next Bat and all that. Just, you know, when they do Star Trek, they really go out of the way to whatever timeline there. And there's this huge timeline, all you, all you Trekkies out there, huge timeline of everything that's been ever shown in a Star Trek movie. And whatever point they go into, it has to be consistent with the timeline. And it would refer to events before that timeline or point to events that we know are coming later in the timeline. I mean, they go through, it's because the Trekkies will eat them alive. If they're not dead right on with these stories and these accounts and these books and these comic books and whatever. But when it comes to the Bible, they just make it up. So I come out of this movie, I'm just beside myself, and I'm saying to my wife, what's the matter with these people? And she said, well, Mark, they don't believe in the Bible. Well, nobody believes in hobbits. <laughs> Who believes in a hobbit? They don't believe in hobbits. They don't believe in Batman. There's no Batman. There's no Star Trek, at least not yet. What does their belief system have to do with anything? It's absurd. And then these same idiots wonder why more people don't go see their movies. Why don't Christians want to go see our Bible movies? Because it's not even close. Did you see Noah? Gigantic rock people building the ark. Did you read the story? So I go to see this great movie. You think if anyone, you know, Cecil B. DeMille, at least he had a clue. He wanted to use the greatest technology of the day to bring to life these incredible... I mean, if you're a movie producer, you, you want to bring to life a... What is more dramatic than the story of the Jews coming out of Egypt? Why wouldn't you make that come to... So, so he's going to do this movie. And uh, so the reason Moses has this vision of God is because a big rock falls on his head. And the rock hits him and he falls into the mud and just his face is up to, he's up to the hip. And then a little boy is God. This is the version of God, a little boy, a creepy little boy. <laughs> you know, I, felt, I was expecting him to turn in a minute and go, I see dead people. You know, they're like, <laughs> this is a creepy little boy. And you know, really, this is your version of God? I mean, at least, you know, Darth Vader had James Earl Jones, you know, with a cool voice. Luke. <laughs> but not Creepy Kid. So Creepy Kid tells him he needs to go back and get the people out of Egypt. So he goes back, and now Moses becomes a terrorist. He's a terrorist. And he's working with the children of Israel, showing them how to shoot arrows and how to, you know, and they went and they were terrorists and they were blowing things up. There's no dynamite, for heaven's sakes. There's no gunpowder. Did you read the story? Blowing, how are they blowing stuff up? It looked like a scene from Rambo. So then eventually God gets impatient because the terrorism is taking too long. 
you know, God, the eternal being. Yeah, he's on the clock. <laughs> Come on, I got places to go. Let's go with it. So he says, I, I got to intervene. So then he brings the plagues. Now, their version of the plagues very bizarre. It starts out with gigantic alligators. <laughs> so the gigantic alligators are upstream, and they're chewing on people. And they're eating the... And then they turn on each other. They're all eating it. It's so fake even. And apparently so many people are chopped up that the Nile turns red with blood. Now, have you any idea how many people you would have to chew (laughs) to turn the Nile River to blood? But that's how it turned to blood. Alligator. All I'm thinking is throwing that creepy kid. Let him chew him up. Just, Just... So, so because of so much blood and all the fish are dying, the frogs can't breathe. So the frogs jump out of the blood. That's where you got the frogs from. And then the frogs died, and then, you know, there's flies that come out of their skin. And, just, and the whole thing was so stupid. And then you get to the death angel. Now, come on. You're a Hollywood director. This is God Almighty sending the death angel to take the lives of the firstborn of everyone all the Egyptians. Even Cecil B. DeMille, that looked cool when he did his... You know what the effect here was? A shadow. Just a shadow went over their faces. Like some guys holding a big cardboard box in front of the light going... All right, cut. Brilliant. That was great. What? And apparently this movie cost a fortune. Apparently, box holders are very expensive. This is your version of the death angel. And then when it comes to the parting of the river, parting of the river, the street doesn't part. Like the Bible says, heaven, why would we tell the story? It's just God lowered the water. So they're kind of slashing through the water to get to the other side. It's like, oh. That's all I got to say. You know, I, I don't, and then I wonder, you know, they're stunned. Hollywood is stunned because Mel gives us, Mel Brooks, <laughs> Mel, <laughs> different Mel. <laughs> I like them both. But uh, Mel Gibson made a fortune off of the Passion of the Christ. It made, he made money like a drunken monkey. I mean, this money came in like crazy. It was hugely successful. And that's why they do these Bible movies, trying to, you know, he was successful. How come we can't be successful? But they're never successful because at least Gibson stayed true to the story. He was extremely accurate. Even had him speak in Aramaic. Nobody speaks Aramaic today. Well, there's a couple of tribes somewhere. It was like a dying language. But that's what Jesus said. So they don't even have Jesus speak in English. They kept it as pure and as true. And the movie was incredibly successful because they just told the story. Why they just can't tell the story? I don't care what they believe. Why do they care what they believe? It's irrelevant. Don't be such idiots. And here's the sad thing. They're doing another one. The King David. They're doing, you know, David, the great mighty warrior who killed Goliath and the great king of Israel. Ridley Scott, the same moron who did this movie, is doing that movie. God only knows what they're going to do with that. David will probably be a gay cabaret dancer from New York City, you know. (laughs) Why not? And he probably gets a fight in an alley with a big fat bully, and that'll be the story of Goliath. (laughs) Idiots. All right, I'm done renting. I'm good. Okay, now let's be spiritual. <laughs>